So I'm out <clears throat> getting some exercise with the the boo dog. Got to exploit the dog on all videos. Getting him some water here, and uh, we're gonna let him sit here and drink some water. But I wanted to get back into why I'm credentialed to write the greatest book ever on cybersecurity. So, because uh, uh, if I do get this big interview, that should uh, should at least introduce the uh, the book to a lot of people. So uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, getting back to the story about me being a, a drug uh, kingpin back at age 14, uh, I didn't tell you on, on the other reason that I had to get out of the business was not only had my underlings betrayed my, uh, my anonymity, let's just say, they also, uh, well, the, uh, it turns out my, my dad at that time, he was the recreation director in, in, in uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> He's dead now, so I can put this video up. But uh, anyway, uh, he uh, comes to me one day and he says, son, uh, he says, the police uh, are in, you know, they're in the parks. He says, but I've been told that uh, there's a drug ring that's moved into the area. And, uh, you know, do you know anything about that? He says, because there's a lot of marijuana's turning up in the high schools around the area. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad, I, I don't know anything about that. Uh, I would, but uh, I, I tell you what, if I find out anything, I'll let you know. So that means uh, they were closing in on me. So and just like uh, you know, when Russia pulled back in Ukraine, you got to know when to retreat. You got to know when you got to get out of the business. And uh, plus, I was also young back then. I was having nightmares about police chasing me and all kinds of things. And I so I. I got out of the business and I never ever looked back, never even smoked marijuana, so you know. But uh, I had to tell that story because uh, I was all, I've always been afraid that somehow that would get leaked to discredit me if ever I did hit the big time, which I'm, I'm not sure, I certainly won't hit the big time for sure, but I mean, maybe a few more people will know about me. So let's, uh, let's reverse and hit on back. I was gonna, well maybe we'll get down here, but I don't wanna leave the dog too far behind. So uh, the, the next story was actually getting back to college, okay? So, uh, because who do you want to hire? Do you want to hire a criminal? Uh, you know that the uh, Democrat Party works with the Mafia and also the drug cartels. There's a lot of money that flows back into the CIA and uh, into the, uh, the coffers of the Democrat Party from those organizations. So cozying up to criminals is nothing new that you, uh, you, you wouldn't want to know about. I mean, for example, the FBI, you know, they've, uh, they've taken reformed criminals, you know, burglars, and, uh, and they use them to teach them techniques of how to thwart burglars back when the FBI actually did their job rather than trying to go after uh, Republicans now and uh, prosecuting, you know, January 6th uh, protesters that walked through the Capitol building. You know, that was back when the FBI actually was a actually did some good in the country once upon a time even though they've been corrupt uh, for many many years under Herbert Hoover and going all the way back but I digress so the the first hack that I ever did and was in college and uh, what I did was I put up a Trojan horse now what is a Trojan horse well it always dates all the way back to the the Battle of Troy you know remember the horse the, the, the Greeks parked it outside the gate and the Trojans brought it in and what what was the Trojan horse was was just uh, just that so it's in, in computing technology a lot of times it's a front end so here's an example of a Trojan horse that I did was uh, the, you know when you walk into a computer room back then we had computer rooms where you go in same thing if you go into a library or you go into uh, anywhere where you're using their computer so what I did was I duplicated the login screen and uh, so and then of course it, it, the login screen is actually a program that's running on top of my account okay and so what I would do is log into all the terminals and then present that login screen so that anybody who came in they would uh, they would type in their password and of course then I would pop up a screen and say invalid password and of course at that time I would kill my program because I've got their password now. And then I would present them another, I would re reboot the system kind of more or less. And then the, the, the 
real program that runs, you know, to enter your password would pop up and then they could log in. So they never knew that I had captured their password. So that's just one example. Another was uh, I had a teacher. This was, I was going to get back to the background of the military was I switched over from the, because uh, I, you know, like I said, I worked with the ROTC guys. So I had a certain affiliation for the Army, and this is back during the Bill Clinton years. We weren't getting any training in the Marine Corps Reserve, uh, for more or less. I, you go out on the weekends and we'd clean our rifles. We cleaned them so much, we scrubbed the bluing right off of the F-16s, which is something you don't want to do. It was just a uh, bad, bad command structure there. So I had, in my town, in Harrisonburg, there's a light infantry unit. So I said, well, hell, I'm going to switch over to the light infantry. That looks like more fun. And it was. It was great. We got to, I got to rappel out of helicopters, uh, uh, flying treetop level, you know, uh, simulating uh, like Vietnam style combat. Uh, we went up into the mountains and my, my one story there was being a Marine, I think I know better than these old guys in, in the Army Light Infantry. Nope, the old guys know more than you do, let me tell you. So on one particular journey, we went up into the mountains, and uh, all I took was, because uh, I said, well, what the hell, I don't want, the, back then the sleeping bags were big and bulky, you know. And I said, I don't want to carry all that weight, you know. I, I was more or less just a college student. I, I won't say I was out of shape, but I wasn't in great shape, you know. But this was a while after I'd gotten out of the, a boot camp, you know, when I was in the best shape of my life from the Marine Corps. And uh, anyway, we went up in the mountains, the temperature dropped down. I, I want to say it was the low 30s, maybe even into the 20s. And I'm sleeping underneath a shelter half and a poncho. I'm going to tell you what, I can't believe I didn't get hypothermia. I shook all night long. It was the worst, one of the worst nights of my life. Uh, so that's kind of my light infantry story. So now I hope you're seeing the credentials for the book. Okay, not only was I a hacker... Oh, and then, of course, I forgot the story where I stole the exam. But well, I'm getting to that. Anyway, so exam weekend, or exam week comes. This is my uh, my senior year, my fourth year of college, you know. So I just I just want to graduate and get out of college. And uh, anyway, you know, if you've ever been in exam week, you got to cram for those exams. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's a brutal time. And I, I don't know why, but my exams were what, one, one, one day, two the next day, and one the next day. And uh, we had uh, drill that weekend, uh, you know, light infantry drill. So I didn't get, and we actually, that was, that might have been the trip up into the mountains. And so, you know, here I come back. So I lost two days to be able to study for my exams because I was drilling with the Army uh, light infantry. And uh, so I begged the professors. I said, look, you know, I need a couple more days to study for these exams. Uh, you know, will you give that to me? Nope. Nope. You got to take the exam on the day that it's there. So what did I do? I hacked the uh, professor's computer and I stole the exam <laughs> on one of them. Okay. The other ones I, I was able to pass on my own, but this one I knew I wasn't going to pass because I didn't get any time to study for it. So even, and I, I'm going to tell you this, this is funny as hell. Even though I had the exam to study by, I was so tired. I was so wiped out. I was so exhausted when I went in to take the exam. I still got only a B. <laughs> I didn't even ace the exam because my brain, I couldn't even think. I was just sitting there trying, going, okay, you know, I studied the exam. What was the answer to this question? And so obviously I put down some wrong answers, even though I had the exam to study by. So I'm just kind of giving you my background as to, you know, my writing of this, the cybersecurity book. So, so now I'm getting the military experience. I'm also getting uh, the computer experience, the hacking experience. You know, I'm learning everything you need to know about how to write a cybersecurity book. Of course, this was many years before I wrote the book. You know, the book was published in 2016. And then we also got to go back to my leadership skills. You know, I was platoon leader when I was at Camp Lejeune. So I had to march a bunch of misfits around for three whole months. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you, these were misfits. I... You know, two quick stories, because I want to entertain you as much as I, I want to educate you about my background. Was uh, I had one guy, he was a hardened criminal. Me, he should have never uh, graduated from um, Marine Corps basic training. But uh, anyway, he he gotten drunk one night, and they would come and see, they'd bang on the doors to get the, my guys up in the morning, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning. 
and uh, Mead, he didn't he didn't like that. It, he got pissed off, and uh, but what had happened was you know, a lot of times the, my guys wouldn't wake up, and uh, they so they kept telling them, well, we didn't hear anything, we didn't hear anything. So the guys banging on the doors would get in trouble. This was because I had the worst leadership in, 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 when I was at Camp Lejeune, and uh, so then they they bang really hard, and then they bang, and then it got to so bad that they would start kicking on the doors to try to get people up on me. They wouldn't let him sleep, so he got up, came came out the door. He was a big sucker, man, and he hit that guy so hard uh, that he knocked him knocked him out. And then he took it I, even worse yet. He took his head, and we had these railings that went around, you know, because this was on the second floor, and he rammed the guy's head through the railings, tore one of his ears off. And, uh, and of course, the, the guys believed now, and then he just went back to bed. Well, that was a blessing for me because the MPs came and uh, they took me away. I never saw him again. I was so thankful to have him out of my platoon. That was a, that was a great moment. And believe you me, I tried with command to tell them that he was a bad apple, but they, nobody in the command would listen to me. But uh, that's just one example. And then another one was my first sergeant comes in and... He was, I, you know, because I, I had to stay away. When you're, when you're a leader, you don't really cozy up to your troops per se. You know, your first sergeant is probably your closest buddy, hopefully. You know, mine wasn't. I don't think he. Uh, well, he, we, we were pretty tight. And uh, he, he comes busting into my room and he says, "Kirk, you're not going to believe what happened." I said, "What? What? What?" He says, three of our guys picked up a soldier from uh, another platoon. It was, you know, they got into a." It was a scuffle, more or less. You know, they got into a heated exchange with the words flying back and forth. Well, the guys from my platoon had, had enough. They picked the guy up and threw him off the third balcony of the building. Broke a bunch of that guy's ribs. Thank God it didn't break his neck. The guy, I don't know what happened to him. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he didn't die if he had died. Uh, but they, of course, you know, now there's going to be an investigation. I told, I told my first sergeant, I said, well, look, I don't want to know the names. He says, what do you mean you don't want to know the name? I said, I said, because the MPs are going to question me about this incident. I said, if I don't know anything, I can't tell them anything, right? I don't want to have to lie to them. He was like, oh, all right. You know, I, I, he said, you know, I said, it's up to you whether you want to tell them. You obviously know the names. I said, but, you know, they might not question you. So, and I, anyway, so yeah, the MPs came. They questioned me, you know, you know who threw the guy off the third balcony of the building? I said, I don't know, and uh, those three, whoever it was, because uh, they never nabbed them because they, there was never anybody but me arrested from my platoon. But I wanted to tell you, okay, so now I'm developing the leadership skills. I've developed the hacking skills, and I've, I've, I've worked with multiple organizations, multiple military organizations. Uh, so, you know, then, of course, once I graduated, I told you I, my first contract was with the National Security Agency. And they have all the goods on me, believe me. They, uh, and, uh, and I passed the polygraph. And by the way, it's real quick, I, I read a book on how to take a polygraph. And if you ever take a polygraph, the way it works is they have to establish a baseline. So they're going to ask you a bunch of questions at first. You know, what's your name? You know, what's your father's name? Is it a sunny day outside? Whatever, you know, the, all the questions that are real easy to answer. And so that's establishing that baseline. And then they're going to hit you with something. And what you want to do, when, when you know it's a, a trigger question, you're going to get a trigger question. So the trigger question for me was, did you ever cheat in college? And uh, now, of course, what you want to do when, when that question hits, because obviously I had cheated in college, so it was easy for me to hit that, send that polygraph right through the ceiling. But you also want to think about something horrible in your life, something that evokes emotion like you never, I mean, maybe, you know, you witnessed somebody getting killed or stabbed or, you know, the, the worst thing in your life. Picture that to send that, that you know, when they, because they got the baseline. Now you want to send that polygraph through the roof. So now when you're answering questions, if you want to lie, you can actually lie and get away with it. So I'm just telling you how to take a polygraph. And uh, I was a lot better back then. I probably couldn't pass a polygraph today. I, I just don't know how to lie no more. All right, man. So, uh, but anyway, that was uh, that was a fun job working with the NSA back then. I I learned a lot about them, and you know, we'll get into the story about me writing the book because I was going to publish in 2013, uh, but Edward Snowden came out and revealed everything. By the way, he's 
documented throughout my book. I, I tell his whole story in the book, uh, on book of cybersecurity, because I had to rewrite the book. There was a lot of stuff that I couldn't talk about in the book because I didn't want to go to jail. You know, they, they, if Snowden comes back, he's going to jail, even though he did nothing wrong, in my opinion. But uh, so I, but once he revealed everything, I could talk about everything in the book. So it took me another three years <laughs> to write the damn book. I was, I, I was a huge fan of Snowden, but I hated him at the same time. All right, so that'd probably be it for the, the, the next video. Uh, well, I, I guess I could tell a couple more stories, uh, you know, because from when I was in Washington, D.C., it wasn't, you know, I, the contract at NSA ended, but I had my top secret SBI clearance. So then I moved on from there. I was doing a, a bunch of work uh, for the uh, Nav Air, uh, and that was, I was writing classified documents. And this is why I don't believe that Trump should be arrested because I'm going to tell you right now, I had suitcases full of classified documents every single day walking back and forth across Crystal City or going, you know, towards the Pentagon or, you know, even taking them up to McLean for, for offices uh, where they checked in and checked out properly. No, and that wasn't my fault. That was people in the government that would just give it to me and they said, well, no, we don't want to go through all the hassle of, you know, checking them in and checking them out properly. Just, just deliver them where they got to go. So I was basically a courier. Now at that time, you remember, we had the Soviet Union. I was worried that somebody somewhere was going to, you know, you know, conk me over the head and steal my briefcase because I didn't have it like chained to my hand or anything like that, you know. But I'm going to tell you that the classified documents, the whole classification system is just, it's messed up. Most of the stuff doesn't need to be classified. And the stuff that is classified, it leaks like a sieve. You know, how do you think the Russians got the nuclear bomb? You know, I don't, I don't think they invented it on their own. I think they stole the technology from the United States. Uh, and I'm sure there's a book written about that somewhere, but I haven't read it. All right, man, so that's, uh, it's, but then of course in, in Washington, D.C., I also worked for uh, NAVC, Naval Sea Systems Command. Then I moved on from there to uh, Cruise Missile Project, and I've told stories about that in the past, where I did all of the programming for a document management system. So you can see the computer skills that I had. Uh, I managed the database uh, for them, you know, worked on their PCs, their computers, the, the, the hardware. That's where I learned about the hardware that I documented in my book. So you can see how the skill set is building. It's building, it's building, it's building. So the question, the reason I'm doing these videos is because the question that's going to be is what qualified you to write this book or tell us about yourself. And do you think I can tell, you know, sit there in an interview and tell all of the stuff that I'm doing in these videos? I mean, they would just say, well, you know, no, we just want to know about the book. So I, I you know, in the interview, I'm just going to say, well, I work for various government agencies. I served in three branches of the military, the Marine Corps, Army, and the Air Force, blah, blah, blah. I'm giving, giving them about a two, two or three minute d dissertation about myself. And then, of course, we're going to get into the topics of the book in the interview. But, but for you, I want to give you a much more detailed picture of where I come from and why I was qualified to write the greatest book on cybersecurity ever written, The Internet is Infected. This is the second video. There'll be more coming, one each day. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is That Cybersec Guy. That Cyber SEC Guy. I'm also on Getter and True Social. On Getter, it's the same as X. That CyberSec guy, and on True Social, it is that cybersecurity guy. I also do minimal postings on Telegram at The World Burning. The World Burning on Telegram. I'm limited to two gigabytes there, so I don't post often unless it's a short video. I also do videos on outdoor activity because I'm into of hiking mainly. But it's Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. That is my main channel for outdoor activity. But I also have a playlist on YouTube called Hiking, Biking, and Camping in the United States. Lastly, I do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products. On Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, 
It is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.